Hi, Dr. Ken here with you again. Uh, we're up to lesson eight, three phase systems. I've broken this lesson up into part one and part two. So about this lesson generally, single AC circuits have an electrical supply provided by two lines, that being the active and the neutral. However, most electrical power is actually multi-phase, typically having three separate phases and a neutral. So in this lesson, presents the principles of three-phase power systems. We're going to explain how to determine the voltages, the currents, the phase angles, and the dissipation of three-phase loads. So basically, this first lesson is just an introduction. So the lesson outline, lesson one is going to be phase introduction, slides one to nine. Then lesson two, phase generation, slides 10 to 19. So our introduction, the first three phase power transmission took place in the early 1890s thanks to Nikola Tesla and if you've looked at the first couple of our lessons we kind of did a little bit of history around Nikola and his uh, development of the three phase system. The simplicity of a three phase motor is one of the advantages of three phase power. Others include improved efficiency in power transmission, particularly the number of wires you have to use, the size of the wires, and the types of devices used to increase and decrease the voltage called transformers. A three-phase 50 hertz AC system is how electrical power is transmitted and distributed throughout Australia and New Zealand, which is where we live. So if you can remember, and you've probably seen this diagram before. Here's how we do uh, generate single phase. If we had here, if you've got a south pole and a north pole, and we've got a magnetic field represented by the green dotted lines and the green arrows, this being a fixed magnet, and we're rotating a coil of wire, and you can see me tracing around the coil of wire, and it comes out to a couple of slip rings with some brushes, which bring out the active in brown, the blue in neutral, in this particular case. So as we rotate the coil of wire around inside the magnetic field, while well, ever it's parallel to the magnetic field, as it is drawn here at the moment, we would be at this starting point. And then as we rotate it, we would climb to the voltage max induced in the coil, therefore creating the current max, then we would descend down to the zero crossing point for the first half of the cycle. Then the coil would rotate through the other half and then back to zero, ready to do it all again. So at each of those zero crossing points, the coil in the magnetic field is in parallel and not cutting any of the lines of flux. So this is a basic single phase alternator has two output terminals and produces a nice single sinusoidal voltage wave shape. So you can see here if we were going to draw a circuit diagram we've basically got a rotor spinning around as you can see here, that's the magnetic magnet spinning around. And we have a pole which has a coil at the top and a coil at the bottom, coil one at the bottom, coil two at the top. And as the magnet spins, then of course current is going to flow through the cable because of the voltages induced in the coils as the magnetic fields cut the, um, the inductor coils and you can see here we've left some space and we're going to fill those up 
as we introduce you to more and more phases. So this is our basic animation. So here we have our, again, our basic animation. Take particular note of the rotating magnetic fields. You can see my cursor there in the middle and the north and south poles. And when the maximum amount of flux is cutting the coils, that's where the symbol for N for north and S for south, cut the maximum, you can see the light goes the brightest. So that's when the maximum amount of flux is being cut. When it goes the dullest is when the minimum amount of flux is being cut. And on the right hand side, you can see the actual phase diagram going up and down. So maximum amount of voltage being induced, therefore maximum and minimum amounts of current are flowing. So it's important that uh, you understand how single phase works, because as we add more phases, we're going to keep increasing the complexity or the amount of information. The actual concepts are not going to change particularly, just we're going to have three of them. So what about two-phase? So if we had a two-phase generator, it would look something like this. We'd have a north pole and a south pole, and the alternator windings would be separated by 90 degrees. So here we have a red one vertically and a brown one horizontally, and that's represented over here by two voltage waveforms. You can see one in green and one in red and got one two three four divisions and you can see we've got a 90 degrees phase shift whether it's at the zero crossing point but there's 90 degrees between them so a two-phase alternator has two windings physically displaced by 90 degrees it's a physical displacement it's this angle here you can see my cursor explaining it on the screen and you'll notice we're rotating our coil in this particular case in an anti-clockwise direction just to keep our things lined up with our phaser diagrams. So it's about a physical relationship of how the windings are actually put inside the rotor of the generator that in this case creates this 90 degrees phase shift when we have two phase two-phase generator. You won't find too many two-phase generators, but that just introduces you to the principle of single phase, now two phases. So here's our two-phase animation now, and you'll notice that uh, we still got our single phase indicated here by the red, the red winding, but we've now added in a third winding. In this particular case, we've not actually put the winding in at 90 degrees. We've actually rotated it through 120. So there's actually 120 degrees relationship now between phase one and phase two. Again, we've still got a simple rotating magnetic field. That hasn't changed. And you'll notice as the north or the south goes past a particular pole, the particular lamp for that phase either gets brighter in the positive direction or brighter in the negative direction. So it's still alternating at 50 times a second. It's just that we've now got two phases at the same time. So here you can see up on the screen we've got phase one and phase two in the top right hand corner here displayed separately. And then we've got the two phases down here in the bottom right hand corner displayed overlapping each other. And if we had a scale, we could demonstrate that they're at 120 degrees from each other. And again, that's just a physical relationship across the center of the generator. So there's our first lesson, introduction to multi-phase. So we've looked at single phase. And in this particular lesson, we've got up to two-phase.